Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our pastor, Monsignor Jim Kaczkowski, is our celebrant. There is a link to the worship aid for this Mass on the Mass stream page of the parish website. The worship aid includes the music for the Mass, a link to the readings, and the prayer for spiritual communion, which we will pray together at communion time. Set all its palaces afire, 
and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths. During all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word the Lord had spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
for us. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so that one, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends, in the Gospel today, we have the most beloved, one of the most remembered and most important verses in the Bible. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son 
so that all who believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. This is the summary of our Christian faith in one verse. This summary tells us that the only love there is is love with sacrifice. Love without sacrifice is just paying the Lord lip service. It means nothing. It basically is omission, sins of omission, failing to respond to people in action. Words are cheap. God calls us to be his disciples, people of quality, people who live love with sacrifice. Examples of this are many. I will share with you a few of them and tell you if we do live a love with sacrifice, it is the road to eternal life. It's the way to the Father. It's the way to save our life by losing it. For example, a married couple. If there is nothing the husband wouldn't do for his wife, nothing the wife that wouldn't do for her husband, and really work at it, giving up their independence, having to give up their pride and sacrifice and forgive one another. And then if there's nothing as parents that they wouldn't sacrifice for their children, and there was much cost, time, energy, love, love in action, money. And there, and there is nothing that the children, when they grow up, wouldn't do for their parents or their elderly. That is what God calls us to do as best as we can in the situation we, we can. It, we're not perfect, but we're called to work at that goal. And it can not only be in our family, it's got to be in our parish, our world. we got to keep spreading out that love and sacrifice. I always think of the same things in the Paul Society, having drive-bys, picking up food outside during COVID-19. People in little or big ways risking their lives, helping people who, who are suffering and willing to, to make that sacrifice and willing to risk their lives in any little or big way. I think it only opened up this church and the people who, who organized and, and registered people to come in and san sanitize the pews and, and help people with social distancing in our church and opened it up in, in the enduring journey. All sacrifice, uh, love with sacrifice. I think of our ministers today, Kent and Coda and Stuart and Rachel, love with sacrifice, not only, not only here being ministers, but doing so many things behind the scenes that you, could, you can't imagine. And it spreads out during this COVID-19, and I just think about what was sacrificed and the risk people took, all the first responders in nursing homes and hospitals, people cleaning the floors, sanitizing, nurses, nurses' aides, doctors, cab drivers, bus drivers, people filling our grocery shelves, checking us out, all taking the risk during that time, being in the public, uh, in times without social distance, they're being very difficult. I, I think of our brother priests going and visiting there the sick and celebrating funerals and, and going to funeral services and wakes and our ministers. I, I give kudos to the older guys who we went out and did it. Love and sacrifice. It's costly, but that's what God calls us to do. God's greatest gift to us, the greatest sacrifice in that verse 16 of John 3 is his son. He sacrificed his son and his sons freely sacrificed himself for us for salvation. 
and I could go on and on. But I think we can share whatever we want examples with our, our family members after this mass. And if you ask the question, is the cost expensive? Of course. Is the cost worth it? Absolutely. It's the only way we'll be happy. If we don't uh, sacrifice ourselves and don't lose ourselves, we can't save ourselves. Those who try to save them, themselves lose themselves. Our Lord tells us that. It's the way our DNA, it's the way God made us. We'll not be happy. We'll have many regrets in the end if we don't. And God is telling us in the scripture to do the best we can. He's giving us the message. Love and sacrifice. There's no other kind of love that will get us to our final home. My dear friends today, also we have the right in the moment uh, for our children who are receiving First Communion and religious education, and also uh, in our, our elementary, the Paris School, the Queen of Angels. They are making a commitment that they're going to renew their faith. Uh, to be closer to God than they are to themselves. And they're going to be begin their journey as children, learning how to how love and sacrifice. And they're going to get help from our teachers and parents who are preparing for them. And they're going to get the absolute help from Jesus, receiving Jesus on their first communion uh, in May. So my dear friends, and I will have the right of the Roman. My dear friends, the right of the Roman world recognizes our children's commitment to the process of preparation for First Holy Communion and our parish's community role in supporting their spiritual growth. This year, their commitment and the blessing they receive in the right of the Roman, as I said to you, must be given virtually. Today, as the children join us remotely, we will bless rosaries, prayer books, and things they will receive later, which will help them on their journey to the Eucharist. I now address the children in our parish religious education program at Inclina Vento School who are preparing for First Communion this spring. I ask you to please stand in your place to renew your baptismal promises and to give your commitment by responding, I do. All others should remain seated. These children are welcomed into the family of God on the day of their baptism. We rejoice with them as they renew the promises made by their parents and godparents on that day. And so I ask you, my dear children, do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who became man, lived, died, and rose from the dead to bring us all to everlasting life? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, who inflames our hearts, enlightens our minds, and inspires us to all that is good? My dear children, our Lord is calling you to come to the table of the Lord and share more fully in the sacred meal and the sacrifice of the Mass. Do you ask to receive Jesus in Holy Communion? Do you promise to listen carefully to your teachers and to follow the good example of your parents and godparents during this time of preparation? My dear children, may the Lord keep you faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ forever and ever. My friends, the spiritual growth of our children has been entrusted to their parents, godparents, teachers, and catechists, and to our parish community. As a community of faith, we recognize
sacrifice these children. And we promise to support their families and teachers by our prayers. We welcome them into their final stage of preparation to receive the body and blood of Christ. May the Lord our God unite us as one family of faith in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Let us all now rise and extend our hands over these candidates, our children for First Communion, and these prayer books and rosaries and pins now before us as together we all pray for God's blessing. Lord God, Father of all, guide your beloved sons and daughters as they prepare to be united with your Son Jesus through First Holy Communion, and bring the love of Jesus to everyone they meet. May the Holy Spirit bring them your grace as they learn to pray and to you and to you and to honor Mary, their mother. May Almighty God bless you, my dear children, in your prayer books and rosary and hymns. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Martha Conrad, Jim and Donna Baker, Debbie and Galanera, Carlotta Pira, and Maki Coons, and all who are suffering from COVID-19. May God's saving hand reach out to them in their suffering. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Noel Moran, Dorian Boygan, Thomas William Havey, Nilsa Leal, Adolfo Manzariegos, Lois Jeske, James Daly, Jose Rivera, Pat Drennan, Anne and Fritz Armitat, Francis Parks, Michael Walsic, Isidoro Maria Epiphania and Placido Cabral, Josephine McDonald, Annalisa Ramil, Fares Galil, Reynaldo Henny, Dale and Joan Maxwell, Claudia Gutierrez, Karina Estrada and Transito Godinez, Jose Luis Perez Patino, Victor Hernandez Luna, and the deceased members of the Corrigan family, and all who have died during the pandemic, that through the mercy of God, they may live forever in heaven with the angels and saints. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our other needs, still in the silence of our hearts, we now pause. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for the repose of the souls of Betty and David Pollock, also Don and Sharon Madison, also uh, repose our soul of Morris Biggers, celebrating his 110th birthday in heaven on March 15th. Also repose our soul of Sophie Scoping. We pray to the Lord. A loving and giving and compassionate God, we ask you to give, we ask you to hear all our prayers through your beloved Son Jesus our light, who lives with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord. Pray that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will, that our self and I should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so now we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, both now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us offer that peace one
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I first want you to know that we pray in a very special way for our children receiving their first communion, and for, for, their, for their parents and for myself. There will all be examples of faith for them, examples of love and sacrifice. Uh, most life, I always granted those are the most important things. It's when you, you're grateful, you know, because you're telling people you love them for what they're doing. And uh, we really thank uh, Kent and Dakota and Stuart and Rachel. Thank you so much for all your sacrifice and uh, for help making this mass possible for us to be closer to God. Also, thank you for your generosity. During this past year, when we did man women doing masses virtually, uh, by giving the gift center we're sending in, we continue our mission to love uh, with sacrifice. Also, uh, I have a good news for us. We've been we vote, we've been voting for uh, our new name of our saint of our parish. And yesterday, in the, my email, I received a decree uh, from the cardinal regarding the. The new name. Uh, people have been asking me what the new name is, and I've been telling them that the new name is going to be St. James the Great. Uh, to, you know, to the honor me and all that stuff. But all kidding aside, uh, this is the decree. Decree in the name of God, Amen. By my decree of February 12, 2020, effective August 1, 2020, Queen of Angels Parish. And St. Matthias Parish, both in the city of Chicago, were united to establish a single new territorial parish named Adinter, Queen of Angels and St. Matthias Parish. After consultation with parishioners, my Episcopal Council, and the Presbyteral Council of the Archdiocese of Chicago, and hearing their advice, I invoked the Holy Spirit. And I decree the following following. Henceforth, and effective immediately, the new parish will be called Queen of Apostles Parish. Given this fourth day of March, AD 2021, from Holy Name Cathedral, Chicago, Illinois, Cardinal Blaise Sukic, Archbishop of Chicago. So, my friends, now, we are Queen of Apostles Parish, but the name of the church will always be Queen of Angels Church, the building, St. Matthias, the Holy St. Matthias Church. The school will be Queen of Angels School uh, forever, and also St. Matthias School. But our parish will now be named, is named Queen of Apostles. Queen of Apostles, pray for us. And, and watch over us in our unification. Let us pray. O God, who enlightened everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you with all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May our Father's face always shine upon us. May the Son's love forever be in our heart. And may the Holy Spirit grant us health, happiness, and peace of mind. And may Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended and is full in peace. Love and serve.